Hey, Animal Chiropractic friends. This is Dr. Amy Hayek, president and co-founder of Animal Chiropractic Education Source. Veterinarians have historically been the people who've been there to support and help animal populations. They are there to protect those who can't speak for themselves. In the world that they call normal is gone and they have been regulated to be careful about how they deal with their patients and about how they deal with their clients. They can no longer interact with their clients directly and they are becoming more separated from those animals as well. Animals are implicated in carrying coronaviruses, which they cannot pass on to humans, but they're being, the media is teaching people that because of fear. Veterinarians used to depend on vaccines to bring patients in for that annual exam so that they could then see the animal and advocate for it and help with its health. They wish that animals would come in more often just for regular checkups because just coming in for that vaccine doesn't give the veterinarian enough time or enough, enough um, valued ability to take a good look at the animal and make sure that they're, they're seeing all the things that are happening throughout that animal's lives. And yet veterinarians have a difficult time getting animal owners to come in for just the checkup, make sure the teeth are normal, make sure that all the other functions are going on because they rely so heavily on diagnostic information, blood work and x-rays and things like that. It is difficult for animal owners to be able to afford that. In addition to that, regulations have become a problem for both veterinarians and animal owners as state, um, state regulations, but also individual regulations, groomers and horse show places and other places where animals and people gather are becoming more and more regulated about how those animals must be not healthy necessarily, but vaccinated and have the appropriate paperwork for those vaccines. The stakes are pretty high. If we keep doing this, if we continue to rely on just the paperwork that says that animals vaccinated or been seen for those vaccines, is that true health? Does that truly let our populations know that those animals are not sick or injured or ill and need to be advocated for in another way? They still can't speak for themselves. It takes the educated eye of those animal practitioners to be able to take care of them. So we're gonna to speak today to Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. She is, she is an international speaker and author. She is a board certified osteopathic medical doctor from Cleveland, Ohio, and she's the founder of Tenpenny Integrative Medical Center, a clinic that specializes in holistic health and healing, including breast thermography, allergy relief, and bioidentical hormones. And she is here to meet with us. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, no, this is good. This is really I, super good. One of the drug trials, one of the vaccine trials I read, they, you know, they don't always tell you what the ingredients are, but I read this one that they were, they thought that this was going to be a broad enough antibody that it might cover 10 strains of coronavirus. Except there's 36. In, there's in, more than that. There's probably more than that. We just well, don't know them all. Yeah, there's 36 that they know for sure. 36, four that cause human illness. Actually, seven that cause human illness. And this, this SARS-CoV-2 virus that's supposed to be the one and that they think there's one virus that went around the world and infected everybody. Even the New York Times published a story last week that says there are at least, this virus has mutated so many times that we know already in this short window, 30, 3, 0, 30 different strains. And I said from the very beginning, whatever this thing is, whatever it is that's happening, it's what's happening in Wuhan is different than what's happening in Iran. It's different than what's happening in Italy, which is different than happening in New York, is different than what's happening in Colorado. And why we are treating these little tiny towns out in the middle of Nowhereville, Kansas, and Nebraska the same way with lockdowns and killing businesses and killing the economy. I don't understand why people are not marching in the streets, Amy. I just don't understand why people are so afraid. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, no, this is good. This is really I, super good. 